from all over America. We're bringing people to Hollywood, people who have something to say. On this show, they'll tell it to Groucho. Brought to you by Polydent Denture Cleanser, the soaking cleanser made especially to fight denture breath and keep dental plates clean. Polydent. And now, here he is, Groucho Marx. Don't applaud, just throw some money up on the stage. <laughs> Thank you and welcome to the People's Network. And here is my assistant, Patty Harmon. Patty, before, uh, before we proceed, would you mind telling our listeners the purpose of this show? Okay. Well, if you have something you want to buy or something that you want to sell, something that you want to show us or something that you'd like to tell us, just tell it to Groucho. Here's a word about something special for denture wearers. Now, what have you got to tell me? Mr. Marks, we have a very special guest who's waiting to see you. Oh, really? What's so special about this person? Well, he's from Twilight Zone. Have you ever heard of that? Heard of it? I've spent half my life in the twilight. <laughs> Are you telling me that Rod Serling is out there? Yes. That extremely talented writer, director, producer, and all-around good fellow? Well, bring him out here. Mr. Rod Serling, would you come in, please, and tell it to Groucho? How did you like that introduction? I loved it. I love it. It's alive, but I loved it. Of course it's alive, but I had to say something to fill the time. <laughs> Rod, I've watched your show many times, and I want to tell you it was wonderful. It's a great show. The only thing more spine-chilling than the Twilight Zone is the pedestrian zone around 5 o'clock. <laughs> How long have you been writing, Rod? Oh, since uh, the early days of radio, Groucho, in 1946. You don't look that old. I am. Now, you've won practically all the honors that uh, you can get for television writing. What do you consider your best play? Oh, I think there are three of them that I'm most proud of, Groucho. One would be The Comedian with Mickey Rooney. The other is Patterns. And the third would be Requiem for a Heavyweight, which we just shot as a motion picture in New York City. Oh. Did you direct it? I couldn't direct traffic. That's why I was interested when you introduced me as a director. I've never directed anything. It's not nearly as tough as writing. Let me explain that to you. <laughs> I'm sure not. That is the toughest job of all, the writer. No. Well, they say first came the word. I guess that's true. Yeah, that's true. true. And Shakespeare said it, you know, about the plays writer. the thing, uh, yes. Uh, and uh, he wasn't a bad writer in his day. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want him today to <laughs> put a show together. You know, he keeps talking about kings and queens all the time. <laughs> Well, Rod, you know the purpose of our show, so let's hear what you have to say. What are you going to tell me? Uh, I'd like to tell you, Groucho, about Batista Locatelli. Is that a dish of some kind? <laughs> <laughs> is no. that some kind of pizza that I no. haven't encountered yet? Batista Locatelli is a waiter in a local restaurant here in town, and uh, uh, I heard him uh, singing uh, oh. once in the restaurant as he was delivering the dishes. And, uh, Delivering the dishes to another restaurant? No. <laughs> waiting table. Oh. But he sang so beautifully, and then upon talking to him, I discovered that uh, he had won several major scholarships, uh, including a, uh, an opera audition. And uh, I was very impressed, and that's why I wanted to come here and tell it to Groucho. Is he, is he here with he's, you? He's backstage. Uh -huh. Do you think he would consent to come out here and I talk to me? I think he would be uh, most delighted, Groucho. Well, never let it be said that I've kept a waiter waiting. <laughs> Patty, would you send Mr. Locatelli in here? Bring him in on a tray so he'd feel at home. <laughs> Groucho, now that I've brought the two of you together, I'd, I'd like... Uh, Batista to tell you all about himself. I've got to get out of here and go back to work. Well, your show is on Friday on CBS. Well, it takes you about 24 hours to get ready for it. Mm. Really? I thought you only worked between 5 and 7 in the evening. Isn't that the twilight zone? <laughs> I know it's a 24-hour job, and good luck to you, and Thank thanks you so for much, bringing Groucho. this good luck young man down here.
Rod, we'll take good care of him up here. Next time you meet him, he may be a busboy in a restaurant. <laughs> now, let's get acquainted. Where are you from, Batista? I'm from Berbeno, Italy, and I was an American citizen born. You were... Wait, now, wait a minute. You come from Italy and you were born in America? Uh, no, American citizen. You're an American citizen now? Uh, I was born an American citizen you, in Italy. You were born an American citizen in Italy? Right. Well, how do you... You speak like an Italian. Well, <laughs> uh, I was born in Italy. That's why I speak like an Italian. Well, now, how can you be in a... In a your name is Batista? I hate to mention spaghetti at a time like this, but is it possible you're off your noodle? <laughs> now, Mr... Batista. Mr. Batista, Mr. Sailing says you're a very good operatic singer. And if this is true, what were you doing as a waiter in a restaurant? Well, I've, I've done almost anything to support my wife and four children. I have uh, worked as a bartender, boss boy, truck driver, bulldozer, you name it, and I have done it, almost. Are you still a waiter? Uh, no. You don't have any job now, huh? Eh? Uh, no. Why not? Are you allergic to work? Uh, my last job, uh, I, I quit. I had a little accident, and... Uh, what happened? You brought in the food on time, and they fired you? I was a room service waiter. Oh. And uh, they call in the orders, you know. This lady wanted uh, two-minute softball eggs. So we have a little machine in the, in the kitchen, and you put the eggs in it, and the times, you know, go by itself clockwise. So we usually put two minutes, a minute and a half, and then by the time you get it up to the, minute, to the, to the room... It's four hours later. <laughs> the, the heat from the egg will bring it up to two minutes. So I got up there, I opened the eggs, put it out. Oh, she said they're not done enough. So I go back and I get another order. Anyway, she sent me back seven times. And uh, I guess I lost my Italian temper. I took the two egg and I went, wow. <laughs> Did you say, madam, this is a good yoke on you? <laughs> well, now I understand why you're out of work anyway. <laughs> now, how is your career coming? Have you tried to sing professionally? No, but uh, I'm doing very good. I've won. Uh, Two scholarship with uh, one with the uh, USC, one with the uh, UCLA, mm -hmm. and also mm -hmm. one uh, uh, a metropolitan audition. Well, I've heard about opera auditions. Uh, what do they make you do there? I'm, I'm sure there's more to it than just singing a few bars of Rigoletto, isn't there? They have you do. Uh, what, uh, do what do they want you to do first? Various uh, uh, tone, like small tones, you know, real soft, in like. Uh, it's a small time. I can sing that. I can do that. <clears throat> There's no trick to that. What else do they ask you to do? Various. <laughs> uh, Uh, Why do you sing Vittoria? That isn't an Italian queen, is it? Well, Victoria was an English queen. Uh, this helped a singer to get a, to get out of pitch. You have to this. sing about an English queen in order to get a job at the Met. Vittorio. I think you will make a very good pirkin on a melon butterfly. What is that? I play a butterfly in that thing? <laughs> what is a pink and tune? Oh, he's the lover. Uh... Oh, now you're talking to him. <laughs> the singer sings a song so sweet. The bigger, fatter prima donna she can sing, but she don't want to. There's music in the soup you eat, the soup you eat. <laughs> They're very good. Yeah, so what's the matter? I, I guess you better sing. What kind of a sample could you do that would demonstrate all the technical facets of your voice. I would uh, like very much to do the Pagliacci aria, but uh, we didn't have an opportunity to rehearse it, so the pianist, uh, now we decided that we should take the highlight. Highlight from Pagliacci? Pagliacci.
Batista, you have a lot of muscle on those vocal cords, and if you go half as far as your voice does, you not only make the Met, you'll also make the Twilight Zone. <laughs> you have a beautiful you. voice. Now, since I'm sure you need money to continue your studies, we're going to give you a chance to win a medium-sized fortune. I appreciate uh, that. Are you good nice. uh, at recognizing characters on the screen? I'm going to put hope, a picture I, up here. I hope you have something in Italian. <laughs> well, uh... You know, we're not allowed to fix shows anymore. <laughs> we're going to show you three pictures. They'll flash for a quarter of a second. Now, if you identify the first one, you win $500. Is that clear? Thank hmm? you. Mr. Mr. Serling is going to come out and help, okay? Oh, fine. Okay. I finished three wow, shows. Wow, good. <laughs> I couldn't stand to see you standing out here alone. That was the whole point, see? Yeah, I'm glad you came back, too. I'll probably the I don't think so. I don't think so. We're gonna... You understand the game, eh? Yes, I do. put a picture up there for a quarter of a second. And if you guess it correctly, you've won $500 for your friend. Okay, put it up. Easy. Uh, Napoleon. Absolutely. Napoleon. Napoleon. That's a, yes. That's a pastry. You know. <laughs> All right, uh, now you're going for another $500. Ready? Yes, I Shoot. think uh, this uh, major. Huh? S square. Square. That's right. That's a square, yes. You weren't looking at me when you said that, were you? <laughs> now, you now have $1,000. You know that you're penalized if you lose the next one. You you'll wind up with 500 Now, you have 1000 Now I'm not trying to persuade you either way. Use your own judgment. You have a substantial help here. I think oh, Mr. Sillin Mr. Sillin over here, we should go. That's a kiss of death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put it up. Uh, oh, Nasser. Uh, yeah. oh, Camille Nasser. Nasser's Nasser. in the cold, cold. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming out here tonight, Rod, and thanks to you for singing. Thank you, good. With $1,500. Good night. Well, folks, that's it for tonight. Thanks for joining us, and I hope we'll see each other again next week. Good night. The Groucho has been brought to you by Scott Paper Company, makers of new magic oval Scotties that float up one at a time or come out in neat handfuls. If you have something to tell Groucho, write Groucho Marx, Box 1989, Hollywood, California.